so um by yes um i've got a story for oh. you okay in fact not just any story i have uh, yet again another one of steve's historical approximations yes Okay. This is the 100% accurate story. It's like a 90, 95% story. I get uh, something that happened in history, and I put it in my own voice this week. Which which, are... which I am just kind of referring to in my head as, like, the news and everybody you speak to these days. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Read your and history. This... It's, it's, it's an ap- approximation of what you think. <laughs> yeah. This week, we are stretching throughout numerous decades and numerous people and even adding some new popular stuff in the mix for cheap clicks and listens with the story of Disney, McDonald's, and Adult Swim. Okay. Okay. There's quite a history here between Disney and McDonald's, a lot of history, a lot of animosity between the two companies. But um, it's interesting that a drunken multiverse hopping scientist and his grandson might bring these two uh, uh, back together (laughs) like like two exes coming back. It's really weird. So the story starts out in WWI. That was the original. Okay. and a ton of people signed up to which take was, part in Which was really just WW for a long time. Yeah, yeah. WW Prime. Yeah. A lot of people signed up to take w. part w. in WW the Kelvin Universe. Yeah. Uh, it, it, yeah, WW Silver Age, I believe is what it was called. <laughs> a lot of people signed up to take part in World War One because they knew that there was going to be a sequel. Yeah. And everybody knows that the original is always better than the sequel, right? So people were like, oh, man, I better be in World War Prime before they ruin the franchise with World War One again or whatever they're going to call it. Yeah. Ha, ha. But the joke was on them because World War Two completely surpassed the original. Better mm-hmm. villains, more action, better, more fleshed out characterization, more downbeat than the original, but an altogether better, better film. Basically, World War One got Empire Strikes backed. That's what I was going to say. It's basically the Empire Strikes Back of Wars. Yeah. Yeah. There was clearly so they, defined good and evil, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a young man who signs up for uh for there's a young man from Illinois or Idaho or one of those lame ass I states, I don't know, Indiana, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I forgot which I state it was, and I didn't want to look it up. So he's from an I state. Just give it to Idaho, because you never, you okay. hardly ever hear Idaho. Yep, he's, he's from Idaho. Idaho's never in the news. They're the American Belgians, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, young man, young man from, let's say, Idaho. His name was Ray Kroc. Okay. And here's here's the crazy thing, okay? Here's the real crazy thing. I haven't seen the film. I don't know if I will ever see the film. It's currently gathering dust on my Netflix queue, and I probably won't see it. And yet, in my mind's eye or whatever, yeah. Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. This guy is 100% Michael Oh, Keaton. yeah, 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 yeah. It's weird. Like, even... even you know, I'm saying that this is a young man. I'm picturing like him like a bobblehead. Like he's got a really tiny body, but still Michael Keaton's head. That's how I'm picturing it in my <laughs> head right now. Just a Michael Keaton bobblehead walking around. So Ray Kroc is doing the pee-pee dance, basically, because he wants to go to war so bad. He lies about his age so he can go kill Krauts or whatever. Yeah. He, he ends up as an ambulance driver during World War One. He's a World War One ambulance driver. And did I mention that he lied about his age? Like I mentioned that. Uh, I don't think you've mentioned it yet. No. Okay, he lied about his age so he could go into World War One. Um, he was only six. 
He was only six. <laughs> yeah, so he really lied about his age. Yeah. You know, he... he but the he, beard helped. He killed more people than he helped. Yeah. Because a six-year-old can't drive an ambulance. His you know? sideburns were awesome. Yeah, running into people and shit. So, so after the war, he goes to a school to learn how to be a professional ambulance driver slash stealer of other people's restaurant ideas. Yes. And here's the crazy part. At school, there he is sitting at, at, at ambulance school, which is apparently a thing. And <laughs> he's sitting right next to another good idea stealing son of a bitch who lied about his age to try and get into World War Original. His name was Walter Elias. Okay. Like, Hi, Walter. My name is Ray. I hope to one day steal a restaurant and turn it into a massive corporation worth billions. Who are you? <laughs> well, well, my name's Walt, and I hope to one day ride on the backs of overworked animators and claim their work as my own, despite my not being able to draw an anthropomorphic mouse, even if my life depended on it. <laughs> I also hope to one day be friends with a man named Ub Iwerks, who I will eventually screw over, real Shakespearean-like. I don't know if that's going to happen. <laughs> Who's named Ub? Ub. No one is named that. <laughs> but still, a man can dream. Well, hey there, Walt. Can I call you Walt? Hey, listen, I like your moxie, kid. If in the future we're ever both in charge of our own mass, massive monolithic like corporations, we should team up and take over the world. What do you say? <laughs> because at the height of their popularity, McDonald's and Disney could easily take over the world. Yes. That, that could easily happen. Because McDonald's, huge. Disney, huge. These two companies coming together basically they could take over the globe yep. those companies are both everywhere yeah, and, you know and, and some days not that bad of an idea <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, but see what, what I'm saying here now is Disney owns Pixar now Disney owns Star Wars yeah. mm -hmm. now I mean, Disney's buying up everything. So, like, could you imagine if they decided to partner up yeah. or buy up McDonald's? And Mad McDonald's does have awesome fries. You know. Oh, love their fries. I don't love know their why fries. everybody their fries. I am not a fan of McDonald's fries. That's because you are a communist. I am just saying that, you know, I'm just saying that a, a fascist totalitarian regime would go down a lot better with amusement park rides it's and hamburgers. A good point. You know? Uh, probably. America probably wouldn't even realize it. But if they were good quality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, if they take over the world, they'll have to up the quality. Yeah. Well, no, On the dog the meat they serve. I really hate McDonald's, actually. <laughs> Would be. They would want to make the quality even worse, add more of that pink sludge to it. Yeah. Because it's that way. And McDonald's is all about profits. Yeah. And, and Disney. And Disney. Yeah. But we would so still McDonald's have Spider Man, damn it. Damn we would right. still have Spider Man. <laughs> so McDonald's and Disney could easily have taken over the world, and they still might. Listen on, my friends. So. Ray Kroc and Walter Elias, they go their separate ways. And roughly, round about the same time, both of them basically strike their own form of gold. Yeah. Ray Kroc finds a well-run restaurant and turns it into the birth of modern fast food. And Walter Elias becomes Uncle Walt, who created Mickey Mouse, coughed off BS. So... Mm -hmm. Interestingly enough, I forgot to mention this. Uh, Walt Walt Disney also lied about his age to get to World War One. Except um, Ray Kroc said, 
oh yeah, no, I'm totally 19. Uh, please let me go to war. And so they sent him to war to be an ambulance driver. And Walt Disney said, I want to go to war and be an ambulance driver. And they said, well, sorry, you're too young. So he went to his mom and got a letter from his mom. Okay. Saying, hi, I'm Walt Disney's mom. Please let him into World War I. Thank you, Walt's <laughs> mom. Signed, where, Walt's mom. Where he received the super soldier serum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then, it's, so then the 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 war people are like, okay, fine. Yeah, he, mom said so. Because your mom said so. I guess we'll send you to war. So he gets a boat. He gets in into a boat. And he goes all the way over to Germany or whatever. And he's like, okay, I'm here. What do you want me to do? I want to be an ambulance driver. And then the people in the foreign country is all like, yeah, sorry, but um, in Emerald Bottom for me. In the time that it took you to get here, we finished the war <laughs> without you. Sorry or bad, I guess. You're going to have to go back home. <laughs> so he never got. Yeah, that's to worse than war. my idea of Walt just punching Germans and winning the war single handedly. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, he didn't even get to be in World War One, which is probably why in World War Two, he was like, yes, can I help you? Can I help you guys win the war? Can I help you guys fight World War Two? Please yeah. help me. Please, please let me help you fight World War Two. You want to take over my company? That's fine. You want to send me to Mexico? I can make some cartoons about weird, weird ass birds. Please let me help <laughs> you win this war. I already I already tried with the other war and I didn't get to do it. Didn't he hate the Jews? That's debatable. And uh, the debate would be, yes, he hated the Jews. <laughs> uh, Jew hey, he was helping his country again. Yeah, he was helping his country. Like, regardless of what was happening to the Jews in World War II, he was just excited to finally be helping with a war. Mm-hmm. So, um, interestingly enough, Early on in the history of Disneyland, like a couple of years into Disneyland, Walt gets a phone call from Ray Kroc, who was all like, hey, Walt, it's me, Ray. You remember we went to ambulance school together, which is apparently a thing. Anyway, anywho, I have. Oh, I didn't. Oh, I see it. She is walking backwards. She needs to start beeping. If she's going to be walking backwards. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I have America's fastest growing food chain. You have a big theme park. How about this? Hear me out, Walt. Okay. You let me take charge of the entire food situation in your park. You put McDonald's right there in Fantasyland or in Tomorrowland. You just put Dis. You just put McDonald's in the whole park. I will be in charge of all of your food. Cheap cheap food and fast because how are you going to feed like uh, what uh, millions of people uh, yeah. how are you going to do that you let me do it cheap food fast what do you say and Walt considered it but it didn't happen primarily because of the cheap aspect because Walt Disney knew that if he controlled the means of food distribution he could charge an arm and a leg for shitty nothing cheap ass food and make even more money in his park ah. which is um food in the park suck ass. <laughs> I'm not saying they would be any better with McDonald's in there, but it would probably be a lot cheaper. Because yeah. it's like, oh, here's a shitty hamburger. That'll be twelve dollars. Uh, you know? You want water? That's three fifty. Yeah. For water. Yeah, I hate that. And that's what I hate about going to Ren Fests and shit like that too. Uh uh-uh. uh, yeah, yeah. I'll do a Ren Fest. That's that's okay, but uh, I'll sneak in a bag. <laughs> you know, yeah. in Phoenix they had the 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 Ren Fair, and then in in Norman, Oklahoma, they have the Medieval Fair. Here in Shawnee, I'm trying to start the Dark Ages Fair because we already have a lot of like cockroaches and rats. Yeah, and, and people it's missing coming. teeth don't bathe. <laughs> so I figure we could get a medieval, we could get a Dark Ages Fair starting pretty quickly. Here. I would say by October, nice. Dark Ages Fair worldwide. Yeah, worldwide, worldwide. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And 
also it will never end. Also, at the time, one of the other reasons why Walt said no to having McDonald's in the park was because Walt was like, "Look, what's your name, Ray? I'm on TV. Have mm-hmm. you seen my show? It's called Walt Disney Presents. You know who Walt Disney is? That's me. I'm on television." I'm making movies, some of the biggest movies in the world. Dumbo, Victory Through Air Power, Darby O'Gill and the Little People. Mm -hmm. Hello, what do you have, some restaurants? So back the fuck off, Ray. Call me back when McDonald's is as big as Disney. Uh, Yeah, that'll never happen. Sick burn. And besides, I plan (laughs) on dying soon. So whatever. Disney out. Drops the spatula because he doesn't have a mic. Drops the spatula. Ma- Maxwell just mimicked dropping the spatula. So so Disney dies in the 60s, but Ray Kroc lives on well into the 80s. And he's still dying to team up with the Disney Corporation. And eventually Disney, uh, it, eventually McDonald's did become as massive and inescapable as Disney. So in the 80s, very early 80s, beginning 80s, these two massive monolithic corporations tentatively join up. But it's not like they're not making out like crazy. And, you know, uh, Disney and McDonald's aren't doing it yet. Yes. You know, this is it, it wasn't a dirty hookup. It was like a casual blind date. Yeah. Between these two companies mcdonald's Cynthia well i Reed. don't know i don't know it sounds like that one girl that you like like all through high school and you keep telling her that but she keeps dating jocks and shit you yep. know until finally yep. finally she's 25 and and she's just like yeah what the fuck yeah yeah so you mcdonald's know? agreed to promote Disney movies in their stores, which is why in the 80s and 90s and near the beginning of the new century, literally every Disney movie was in McDonald's with promotions Uh and Happy Meals. Disney made the Happy Meal the cultural icon that it is now. Interestingly enough, the first toy that they ever gave away in a Happy Meal, this blew my mind, Star Trek toy. Really? It was like a yeah. I looked it up. It was it's like a Star Trek communicator, but really what it is was just like a cheap plastic watch, and you could put into the cheap plastic watch pictures of different animated Star Trek characters. Okay. So so you can pretend you're talking to Scotty. You can pretend you're talking to Captain Kirk. But yeah, but really the Happy Meal exploded when when you know McDonald's started doing. Uh, at your Happy Meal, uh, Mickey Mouse, and they and it wasn't, yeah. So Happy Meal toy collectors are a thing, and basically yeah. they only exist because of Disney. And of course, once again, looking up uh, about uh, Happy Meals and McDonald's and Walt Disney, what did I find? Complex Magazine's list. Of the 50 greatest Happy Meal toys of all time. Nice. Complex Magazine really has a thing for top 50s. Yeah. Just to let you know. Although this, and it's weird because you know what the number one Happy Meal toy was? Um, 120 Days of Sodom. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently. I should have gotten that one. Yeah. just Just from the last... The last time we mentioned Complex Magazine, yeah, they had 120 Days of Sodom toys. Yeah. We didn't know. Totally didn't know. I, 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 I hope it was a figure of the Larry from the Three Stooges guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was fun. He, he liked to get butt-fucked a lot. He was a lot of yeah. fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. But it wasn't just Happy Meals. For example, for the live-action 101 Dalmatians movie, Select McDonald's, became giant dogs. <laughs> and I was I was I was telling this to like I think to Natasha yeah. and then Emerald was like sitting on the couch and she went, "What?" And I'm like, "Yeah, you don't remember that certain stores, certain McDonald's would have like giant spots covering the outside of it and like 
fake ears coming out of the top of them and tails and shit. Yeah. Crazy stuff. I don't remember that either. Yeah. And Natasha and I remember it. And I looked it up and the pictures are just bizarre, but it would be weird. Like, hey, there's McDonald's. Hey, there's a McDonald's. Hey, there's a giant fucking dog. Really weird. There was also commemorative glassware. Um, celebrating well, a lot of a lot of chains did commemorative glassware. Yes, we have we have some uh, Disney McDonald's commemorative glassware in our kitchen right now. Which yeah, um, we we had a lot of the Looney Tunes glasses, but I forget yes. who was doing those. Yeah, um, they also did special contests and shit, and they did odd stuff too. For um. The movie Mulan, McDonald's sold McNuggets inside Chinese takeout containers, which even at a young nice. age, I thought was mad racist. <laughs> like I tapped out for that. I'm like, okay. See, so I automatically movie. thought it was nice. See, that's where I went. No, I no, I just went, you're selling McNuggets in Chinese takeout containers for Mulan. Is that racist? It might be racist. I think it's racist. Whatever. I'm not going to McDonald's this month. Here's a hint. Here's a hint. If Steve thinks it's racist, it might be racist. It might be racist. So. That's like, that's like white supremacist saying, dude, that's racist. Yeah. Yeah. That's a Nazi going, whoa, take it down a notch, pal. Yeah. They even made a special Szechuan dipping sauce for the nuggets. Important to note that that was 1998. Uh In the 80s, they also had had activity books, I remember. And then, to further their agreement with Disney, um, McDonald's decided to further their agreement with Disney. And so Disney agreed to slowly, very slowly, start working McDonald's restaurants into their parks. That was when they really got serious. They signed a 10-year contract. It was in 1996. This was the dirty, nasty hookup that Ray Kroc wanted all along. Uh At the time, the media called it, quote, an unprecedented global marketing alliance. Oh. And at the time, it scared the shit out of me because this was my fear. Oh, my God. McDonald's and Walt Disney are coming together. Together, with their power, they could destroy the world. (laughs) It's like when Dr. Doom and Magneto team up. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, Magneto's bad. Dr. Doom is bad. Oh, my God. Together, these guys could destroy it if they didn't, you know, just eventually break down and start hating each other. It's like if Apple, Starbucks, and Facebook created a giant corporation called Globo Chem. Yes. Basically. Uh That was McDonald's and Disney coming together in 1996. So the fall of this... But but now the scary thing is we barely even know the names of a lot of the big corporations anymore. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, well, uh, they're people now. So well, they're people, yes. Yeah, that's why we don't know <laughs> because they're they're people. They walk so, among us. So the fall of this alliance came shortly afterwards. Both companies basically hated each other because at the time, McDonald's people in America we're slowly, slowly, slowly starting to realize, like in 1996, 97, 98, 99, people were suddenly, oh shit, this is mad unhealthy. Guys, we should stop eating at McDonald's now. (laughs) Wait a second. McDonald's makes us fat? How come no one told me this? Yeah. I am shocked. (laughs) <laughs> you mean this has been unhealthy this whole time? Holy crap! And, and there was and there was also the great the great styrofoam container controversy. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So and also it's not just McDonald's fault because the late nineties 
sucked for Disney. You know? Oh, uh, yeah. Like, like back in the 80s and 90s, that was like a real, like, oh, my God. So we're going to be promoting The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast. This is wonderful. It's a golden age for Mc- for for Disney, and that's only going to help McDonald's. And now that they have this massive contract, now McDonald's is happy to promote Home on the Range. <laughs> Hooray! Come to McDonald's, your home for all things Treasure Planet. Yeah. Kids, are you excited for Disney's Bolt? Exactly, Bella. Exactly. Exactly what? (laughs) Yeah, so it's also the late 80s, the late 90s, early 2000s. People are getting healthier. Carbs are a thing now. Yes. And people just aren't in tune with McDonald's pink slime surprise. So it went both ways. Sure, McDonald's appeared. Well, I I personally am not terribly health conscious. I just think McDonald's tastes like shit. I love McDonald's, but yeah. that's because I have so many kids that it's often about price and not quality for me. Yeah. I It has to be that way with the five kids I have in this house. Mm-hmm. So it's less about, I need to give these kids some good, healthy food. It's, I need to give them something cheap and now. Yes. So unfortunately, a lot of McDonald's. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so so Disney was committed to start putting McDonald's inside of their parks, and they appeared a lot in and around Walt Disney World, but not so much on the other coast. Only two very small areas of Disneyland Prime ever sold McDonald's food, and it was only fries. Ooh. Weirdest, weirdest thing that in the middle of Frontierland there was a wagon. And they only sold McDonald's fries and sodas. That is so sad. Weirdest thing. And then there was another, there was another like harbor area, like by, by the the rivers of America where come on down and you can get yourself uh, some McDonald's fries. That's that's really so the equivalent of, uh, 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 uh. Get out of the fucking car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it was only fries and it was weird, but it was awesome for people with who love way too much salt like me. Yes. Love love me some salty fries. But when the Your contract was up. Good. That's the only thing I can say about yeah. McDonald's. Though. Their yeah. fries are good. And it, But again, yeah. if you remember, I'm not a big fry person. Yeah. No, I absolutely remember that. But when the contract was up after 10 years, uh, Disney and McDonald's, they broke up and they broke up bad. They 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 went their separate ways. Still to this day, it's weird to me that Disney movies come out and they're never advertised on a in a happy meal. Yes, that's weird to me. That's that's bizarre to me. So now, at McDonald's, all this month, you can get toys from the Emoji Movie in your (laughs) happy meal. Oh, fuck you, Disney. Yes. I want Patrick Stewart as a poop emoji in my freaking happy meal, but okay, whatever. Patrick Stewart is the poop emoji? Yeah. And the poop emoji is in it? Yeah. (sighs) Yeah. 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 These are all things that exist. These are the end times. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's weird. But but yeah, no, they hated each other. They got Disney out of the theme parks, and uh, now Disney is, is struggling to become healthier and more health conscious. They're trying, you know, they're, they're trying to rebrand their image. They've basically been trying to rebrand themselves since McDonald's broke up with Disney. So they're trying to be seen as healthier. They're trying to have different options. They're to, they're trying to be more handcrafted and artists and all or arti- artisanal and yada yada yada. But basically, they really broke up and they broke up hard. And there is no way that we are ever getting back together. 
There is yeah. no way that you'll ever see Disney and McDonald's team up ever. There is nothing that can bring us back together. And that was it. Yes. But what might bring these two massive companies back together? A drunk animated scientist and his grandson. Yes. Because Rick and Morty, I knew so many people that loved Rick and Morty, that thought Rick and Morty was hilarious and, and were obsessed with Rick and Morty. And I stayed clear of it for as long as I could just because it was so popular that mm -hmm. I just tapped out. That's what I do when things are so popular yeah. that I'm like, I'm going to be different and not like this popular thing. So I'm trying to get <laughs> a, I'm trying to stay away from that. If something is pop, really popular... It might be really popular for a reason. You should give it a try. What finally did or is... Or it is, might be Justin Bieber. It's, yeah. It's, it's like the box yeah. of chocolates things. You know? Yeah. Okay. Life is not a box of chocolates. There yeah. are some turds in there. Yeah. Yeah, life is a box of chocolates, but you know what else is in a box of chocolates? Crunchy frog. Crunchy frog. Yes. Crunchy frog. Mm -hmm. And spring surprise. Spring surprise. You guys are going to McDonald's. Is it because of my my no, amazing it's... podcasting? Well, Is it because of my no, amazing podcasting? No. Oh. Your son's been asking for McDonald's for over a week, and I keep telling him I'll ask your dad, I'll ask your dad. So I figured you doing a podcast about McDonald's is permission enough. Yeah. yeah. He's been wanting nuggets. Yeah. <laughs> like nuggets. Everybody wants McDonald's except for me. Um. Yeah. Should, should, should you guys basically just get Ella her own happy? I feel like that's, uh, yeah. Because she, she eats so much. enough to have her on every other. So it's it not. So it's, uh, it's, emoji movie this it's not because of the podcast, but the podcast implies consent. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What finally made me say okay to Rick and Morty was the fact that that um, you know what? If this show is is being created. Oh, this will be wonderful. If this show is created by one of the guys who created Rick and Morty, that created Community, uh -huh. then I can give Rick and Morty a chance. Because I love Community so much. Yes. That if the man who created Community also created Rick and Morty, that's enough for me. Yes. I, I will sit and watch Rick and Morty. And it's a wonderful show. But they have a hard time, you know, getting to create the show and write it. And they put a lot of detail and effort into the show. So uh, between season two and season three, it took a really long time. And people were complaining because Rick and Morty were getting to be as popular as they ever have been. And people were really loving Rick and Morty. So then they decided to sneak the first episode onto people. And on uh, April Fool's Day as well. Yeah. And it really surprised people because a large portion of the first episode of season three is all about how Rick wants nothing more than McDonald's Szechuan dipping sauce. Yes. From the 1998 Mulan promotion. And, and when I first saw this episode, I thought, okay. Now, if I was McDonald's, I would be in a pretty uncomfortable situation because McDonald's is a family restaurant and Rick and Morty is dirty as shit. <laughs> so McDonald's is really in between a rock and a hard place because McDonald's can go, hey, check it out. McDonald's, your number one home for Rick and Morty. But then Rick and Morty is about such violent shit and these foul language and just so much drinking and drugs and sex that um, maybe McDonald's shouldn't be uh, hitching their wagon to this, you know? Or like McDonald's. maybe it's time McDonald's. to go for McDonald's After Dark. <laughs> nice. Yeah, like Playboy. I, I I'm waiting for for the tequila cheeseburger. It's been a dream of mine. I think the time is now. 
but oh my god, they would serve you food slow. like in Coyote Ugly, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But slowly, slowly but surely, McDonald's has been promoting Rick and Morty. Okay. Rick and uh, McDonald's started tweeting some uh, uh, Rick and Morty catchphrases. They are, they are, uh, they made this big, recently, they, they gave the creators of Rick and Morty a big ass tub of, uh, Szechuan dipping sauce. And it came in this special contain, this special briefcase, it, along with a note that said that this Szechuan dipping sauce was taken from an alternate dimension. Yes specifically from the creators of Rick and Morty. And also, uh, they're going to be giving select uh, Rick and Morty fans a chance for them to win their own uh, Szechuan dipping sauce. And here's the way these two companies can get back together, because, God damn it, um, it, it, Disney now realizes that they can rake up billions of dollars by getting animated movies and adding very little to the script and just doing them live action. So they are currently f finishing up work on the live action Mulan movie. Okay. So, so are we, are we, are, are you suspecting we are going to see a return of the dipping sauce? You have to. If McDonald's is uh, chomping at the bit to try and seem cool with Rick and Morty fans, and Disney's about to release a goddamn Mulan movie in a year or two. Yeah. God damn it! These two, these two are gonna get back together. Yeah. These two companies are gonna get back together for goddamn Szechuan dipping sauce. That there's no way that McDonald's can't do this, basically. Yes, but couldn't that lead to the ruin of McDonald's and McDonald's once again getting screwed by Disney? Because first there's karma there. Oh, yeah. Okay. As McDonald's finds that not that many people really like Szechuan dipping sauce, it's just a joke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And now they're stuck with vats and vats of, you know, there will be dipping sauce for the poor. You know? Yeah. McDonald's will have to start doing outreach programs to get rid of the dipping sauce. Yeah. But, you know... People will have it the first day, the second day, and then forget about it. Yeah. But God damn it, God damn it, I think that the fans... Will demand this. Yeah. And I think McDonald's will cave. Well, I would demand it too, McDonald's again, will... just because it's fun. <laughs> yeah. And McDonald's will go back to their ex and be like, hey, let's just get back together for this one thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, no, they might come back together. And they might. It's your child's might... graduation. Try not yeah. to be drunk. Yes, Maxwell, what? Uh, what, baby? I want to tell Bunny something. You want to tell Bunny something? Of course you do, because I was on a roll. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, Bunny? Yes? Okay. McDonald's? The real McDonald's actually doesn't make you fat. The no, real doesn't. McDonald's doesn't make good fries? No, no, it doesn't make you fat. Oh. That's the thing I want to tell you. And pancakes with syrup on it? You, you are right about that, Maxwell. Pancakes with syrup on them are yummy. I believe we have a future conspiracy theorist here. Yeah. yeah. But he's gonna but he's no. gonna just picture him dressed like Alex Jones sitting behind a desk <laughs> going on about how McDonald's really doesn't make you fat. McDonald's doesn't make you fat. It's the water that turns the friggin' frogs gay. Yes. Love that so much. <laughs> but yeah, Disney and McDonald's, they have a long history. They uh, are recent. They, they, gone, they went through a nasty breakup in 2006, but they might be getting back together. 
because of a Mulan movie and a drunken scientist on Adult Swim. Pretty sure they're going to be getting back together. And when that happens, um, watch out because these two companies might take over the world. Yes. 